Setting up Azure Cash for Redis is very simple and easy to do. I'll show you how to set it up and show you some good things that you should know, like how to set up a private link, which is a new feature that was just introduced a week or two ago. This new feature allows you to set up a private endpoint with your Azure Cache for Redis deployment. It's really important to know how to do this because not only is it more secure, it also provides lower latency because there's less traffic on your private endpoint compared to your public endpoints. And also it's more cost effective because cloud platforms typically charge less fees and fewer fees for transferring data between private endpoints versus public endpoints. So it's more secure, more performant, and it's more cost effective. So let's dive in. Let's start off by getting familiar with the enterprise tiers for Azure Cache for Redis, which are our two tiers over here on the very right. We have the enterprise tier and the enterprise flash tier. I'll actually point out the enterprise flash tier later on in the demo, but just so you know, it's a more cost-effective way to store some of that data in SSD instead of all of that data in RAM. As you can see, it also has the highest memory size here listed on throughout all of the tiers at 1.5 terabytes. Also, these enterprise tiers have the most amount of high availability, five nines of availability. And then down here, it says that there's no virtual network, but you can associate a private link with a virtual network. And then also on the enterprise tiers, you have active geo-replication, which is a very good way to not only add more persistence and consistency across your distribution throughout the entire world, but also lower latency to you know, applications throughout the world as well. We have the Redis modules, Redis search, Redis bloom, Redis time series, which I'll go over more later on. And then finally, the last two things are also the highest uh, performance as well, which is network performance and maximum amount of connections for the enterprise tiers. So with that, let's keep going. Well, we're gonna start off on the Microsoft Azure homepage. Let's go ahead and search Azure Cache up top and below you'll see Azure Cache for Redis. Go ahead and click on that. We'll land on the services page where we'll see existing um, deployments of the Azure Cache for Redis. Let's go ahead and click create. There's only a couple things that we need to do here. So first of all, the subscription, which is pay as you go, we'll leave that there. And then the resource group. The resource group is a container that groups up resources like networks, virtual machines together and other things. I'll go ahead and select mine. And the DNS name. And then the location, which I'll keep in the region of US East. And then the cache type. So a quick look at the recommended types here, the enterprise flash tier allows you to have the high availability and performance, but also cost effectiveness because it enables you to store some of your data on flash instead of all the being on DRAM. Let's go ahead and select the E10, which provides 12 gigabytes of, of memory and replication. Let's go ahead and select the check mark for terms. And then finally, let's click the next networking button to go on to the next step. This is where we can select our private endpoint option. Since we don't have any credit, let's go ahead and click the add button. We're gonna keep the subscription location or region uh, the same. Let's go ahead and add the name of our private endpoint. In the networking section, select your virtual network that you'd like to place this private endpoint into. And then the private DNS integration is on by default, so I'll go ahead and leave that on as well. And that is it for this page. Go ahead and click OK. And that is it for this page. And finally, let's go ahead and click the next to the advanced section. So first, we can select the modules that we want. The three that we have are Redis Bloom, Time Series, and Redis Search. Redis Bloom is for probabilistic data analysis, often used for advertising, fraud mitigation, and gaming leaderboards. Redis Time Series is for timestamp data, often used for IoT, stock price data, and telemetry data. And then finally, Redis Search is good for real-time querying, indexing, and full-text search engines. Go ahead and do Redis Search. And then Zone Redundancy, which is essentially the multi-availability zone option, it's disabled by default, but we'll go ahead and enable it since that's the recommended. Um, it's going to spread our data across multiple zones, increasing its durability for possible outages. 
I'll leave non-TLS access off um, as I'm not going to be setting up TLS. And then you can set your eviction policy and also set the capacity. Um, you'll show you'll see that it shows our 12 gigabytes of uh, memory that we set earlier. And then above it, the number two, which is the number of nodes that these gigabytes are going to be broken into, six per shard. Next, we can choose between the OSS or enterprise clustering policy, which selects what cluster API you would like to run on on top of your Redis enterprise deployment in the Azure cache for Redis. Um, so essentially, the OSS clustering policy provides extremely low latency and linear scalability at the cost of additional de development steps and DevOps maintenance. Enterprise clustering provides management access and the discovery of cluster topology, which, which takes those extra deployment steps out of the picture at the cost of some latency, but it still has uh, the linear scalability. Next, we can select our persistence options like RDB, also known as snapshotting, which will take a snapshot across all of your nodes at a frequency of one, six, or 12 hours. This is technically a less persistent option as even if your backup frequency is set to every hour, there could be data loss with an outage in that one hour time frame. We can also select AOF or append only file, which maintains a record of write operations, which could be used to restore a database in case of a failure. The backup frequency, as you can see, is always write, which will append every write to the file. And then also, an additional option is write every second, which will write all of the writes to the file every second. There are pros and cons to both options. You may sacrifice some latency with the more persistent option AOF, but if your acceptance of data loss isn't super high, then RDB could be a good fit. Lastly, we can configure active G-replication, which will replicate your data across clusters in an active-active configuration which will essentially keep multiple clusters synchronized automatically across multiple zones, allowing strong eventual consistency and extremely low response times for applications across the world. All right, that is everything on this page. Let's go to the next tags page. I'll add owner and my name. And then finally to the next review and create page, which will show us the product details We'll go to the bottom and click Create, which is behind my face. I'll put that over here. And we are done. It'll take a couple minutes to set up, and then we should be good to go. All right, the deployment is complete. Let's go to the resource. And let's see if we can find our private endpoint. There it is, sweet. Well, that is it for this lightning demo. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.